Hi! Welcome back. Another week, another rad years. Sorry we're a wean too late. This is going to happen in this season. When, last year, uh, we didn't have a busy season at all in the summer. We uh, were doing a show every damn day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until July. This year, a little different. Uh, everything's back kind of to normal. Not really. Yeah. But everyone's at least pretending it's back to normal. So. Yeah. Speaking of... All that root beer. I'm sorry, Budweiser tapper, and the beginning of the show. If you look, if you watch on YouTube, I play video game playthrough. It's like uh, it's like our elevator music, our, our lobby music squeezer. Yes. Waiting for us to do the show, and I was playing tapper, not root beer tapper, the original arcade Budweiser tapper. Oh, I was wondering what that was. Uh... Now, root beer tapper, because we're talking retro soda. I was like, what game could I do soda in? I was going to try and find Soda Popinski's music. You know. Ah, uh, yeah. I was thinking, uh, when you were playing it, I was thinking of the uh, segment in uh, Back to the Future where you got to throw the <laughs> mugs. That one boss battle. What? In Back to the Future, on NES. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. That awful game. Oh, yeah, that game. I could re reference that easily. Sure. <laughs> Is mugs what they're throwing? I, I think they're supposed. I think yeah, they're you slide mugs or something with mug. I think they're supposed to be mugs. I should start a wizard staff with my three Sam Adams summer ale cans. Um, but yeah, this time of the year, there's baseball. Next week, I don't know. You you have. I was looking at our crewing site. You have a, a gray question mark next next Wednesday, but I believe I'm directing, so I don't know. Oh, that, that's the you you send me where you need me, sir. I you're at my will and my mercy. Uh, yeah. It's uh. Please let me spend time with my family, but I guess you need me, so go ahead, take me away from them. It, the week went from not being busy. It was always yeah. busy. I just didn't have crew master. If you look at if you look at Christie's much more meticulated sheet, her spreadsheet, you'll know you'll have a better idea of what our weeks look like, Squeezer. I know what tower to point the dish at. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, yeah. Ooh, no, a... I'm glad things are busy. I'm shooting things. I'm like with a camera. You know, I'm out and about. He's out and about squeezer, everybody. It's different. It's, it's, yeah, I know. I'm a man about town. He's a man about town. I had Tapper for our Commodore 64 growing up. Uh, we had two Commodore 64s. We had like this, this, the this weird C model or whatever the fuck it was. It was kind of like a, like a beige, like, like the modern computers at the time, the 90s computers. Mm hmm. And then my dad, I'm going to look that up. My dad's boss which model it was i just want to see what it looks like 64 the c uh i think it was hold on i gotta see a picture of it. i'll tell you exactly what it was. now Commodore 64 models okay we had this one it was the c yeah it was yes the c that's the one we had. See how it's it's like modern computer, but see that ugly brown one? Um, scrolling through, looking for. Oh, there's a cool red one. The original Commodore sixty four. Now my dad's boss gave him his old Commodore sixty four. My dad collected Commodore sixty fours because him and I both like to dabble in basic. But he wrote a program to keep uh, score and timing for Pine. 
box derby racing or whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> so we used Commodore 64s and he put them up on the television because it, it used RF modulation for its monitor. So, mm-hmm. And he, so he just used a splitter. That was his game. You know, that, that's that was his trade. So he'd use this RF modulate a one Commodore 64 to like five TVs in our uh, school uh, auditorium slash lunchroom, which was the same room, um, Catholic school. Oh where yeah. Where the pine was? It, was there a basketball court with like a little bar with like a little half garage door there? Yeah, it was the gym. No, the basketball court with the the bar and half garage door was in the church basement squeezer. They wouldn't oh, keep okay. booze in the school basement. They kept them in the church basement. Sure, <laughs> where your booze belongs. Right, but it was all. It was the gym, the auditorium, and the lunchroom. Yes, it was all three. And um, you kind of see a, a version of it when you uh, when you go to uh, Notre Dame Green Pond Squeezer. Yes. How the stage yep. is right I know. There. Yeah. There's, where if you uh, go for a layup and you got a little too much momentum, you're going to be on stage. Right. Yes. And you, then you shall perform. Nonetheless, uh, he would then take one Commodore 64 and the RF modulation with a cable splitter because it, it uses standard uh, uh, – F type head fittings, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he'd run cable all around all the televisions and have this with good Commodore 64. No, we got, we got the at point is there, we collect Commodore 64s. So we had <laughs> this Commodore 64, and I don't know how we came into possession with a a cartridge of Tapper for Commodore 64, but it didn't work in the one mock. Everything loaded different in Commodore 64. Nintendo was great because when you got it, you put the, you put the cartridge in and it worked. Uh, over years, you'd have to do that. <sighs> And, you know, finagle it. But mm-hmm. that was just connectors. Like, generally, it worked. Commodore 64 was a crapshoot whether you were playing that game today or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daryl Carter. Can't Daryl. I can't read. Daryl Cantor's 29th birthday. He said he wants, RK, can I get a happy birthday from Macho Man and Snagglepuss? Might as well start the show you off. You can't deny a request. Yeah, right. Might as well start the show off right. Thinking, 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 yeah, on this earth, 29 years, but still spends his nights listening to two idiots talk about nothing, yeah, be a man, yeah, get out there and do something, cream always rises to the top, yeah, that is a Megatron, I must object, Mr. Macho, I think listening to these two morons is fun. And I'd like to say a very happy birthday to Daryl Cantor. I can read, unlike RK, who's a moron. Now exit stage right. He's a moron, Pink Cat. You got that right. Anyway, happy birthday, Daryl Cantor. Yeah. <laughs> you got me with the pink cat. <laughs> That's how much a man I think would address Nagapus. I think so, and I I think Snackle, Snagglepuss though would be a little too distracted by oh. just oh man. his muscles, my goodness, oh, and as he wrestles, more clothing comes off, but the hair, what's going on with that hair? Don't touch the hair, all right? When we're in the ring, keep your hands off the hair. <laughs> Well, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Uh, well, it's a good thing that that's why we moved the show to tonight, not last night, because we didn't want to interrupt his birthday celebration. Yeah, right, right, right. That's exactly right. Yep. Uh, Commodore 64. Point of my story is I we occasionally we that's where we had Tapper, and there was a, the interlude where the guy shakes the bottles and you have and they they do like the pick the one that's shaken. There was actually a Mountain Dew logo behind it, so it was if, if to say he was shaking a Mountain Dew, and I thought this was so cool, like product placement in a video game. And the song was. What year was that? I was somewhere in the eighties. Mountain oh. Dew was saying. I think I could find Tapper Mountain Dew. So there was. I think I told the story before, but I'll tell it again. There was a. Uh, No, Tapper Mountain Dew shaking. There was a scene where uh, the guy would shake the Mountain Dew, and it, 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 the 
song music was like let me see if i can find it this is atari no tapper com let me see it's tapper c64 okay here's the c64 let me see if i can find it we'll just scroll through ah here it is so this is the music for and my brother and I would sing because I made up the song. Well, the man is shaking the dew. The man is shaking the dew. Na, 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 na. The man is shaking the dew. And he said, this one's for you. Do, 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 do. Yes, so. Isn't that adorable? Now that I think about it, let me just... Uh... I like the, the first comment under this is, I was just four years old when the C64 taught me how to serve beer to angry alcoholics. <laughs> root, root beer. Root beer squeezer. Ah, yes. Well, root beer is delicious. Is root beer on any of our lists? It's a yours uh, there, sweetheart. Oh, con oh that is, well, it is, but it's kind of not. Really I mean, if you're here. looking at the image on our YouTube right now, the lead, I kind of buried oh, the lead. Spoilers. <laughs> it's the whole th oh, yep. Uh, yep. There it is. Yeah. Good. I can just use that instead. I don't have to reference my list. I can remember what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> um, News of the world, Squeezer. Are no we talking root beer? I suck at this show. <laughs> I am so bad at what I do. No, you're not. You're handsome and you're a sweet boy. And always pays off in the podcast. Did you see Red Dead 2 in VR? The mod, no. Luke Ross modded Red Dead 2. And you could watch it on YouTube. Red Dead Redemption in VR is wild. Ooh. It's only a matter of time because it becomes this is a real. A real yeah, be, before this becomes a real thing. Pringles. I guess their their combination with Wendy's. They put out the Baconator chips earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. They're debuting spicy chicken chips, limited edition. I gotta get that can to save. <laughs> the boys. I'm going on comic book. I'm just reading you the headlines off comicbook.com. You yeah. can do this yourself, but it's more fun when we do it. We add commentary to it, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, you read it, and I go, oh, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Boy Showrunner teases mind-blowing season three premiere. I just want to see that guy with the giant schlong again. Yeah. Do th I don't think he survived that, though. Yeah. No. Well, you don't know. In, in comic books, no one's yeah. ever dead. I don't know. Is it, is it like um, like if like the schlong was removed? Like, can he like regrow? Could it just be like a giant evil superhuman schlong now like it's on its own yeah that'd be cool um did we talk I know, I know this i think this came out last week but we missed it did we talk legends of the hidden temple coming back no um more we did but maybe it was in the group we, chat maybe oh yeah it's for adults um, though right what's that yeah it's for adults and it's going to be on the CW, but casting oh, is now open. I thought it was on the Paramount Network. Uh, it's on. It's a CW production. Um, Here is a true... My hopes for this have kind of gone out the window. Here's a true... I'm going to do an honest uh, re revelation here. Squeeze. I'm going to yeah. put my cards on the table and be completely honest. I wasn't a big fan of Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, Wow. I liked okay. Guts. I liked Guts. But something about Legends of the Hidden, you. Hidden Temple, there was too much learning involved. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were going to go like production value. but No. Um, like I love Guts yeah. was just – Guts was uh, American Gladiators for kids. Like no thought yes. put into it whatsoever. Double Dare was like it. trivia, simple trivia. And, yeah. and then it went to gross the like, gags and fun uh, obstacle courses. Uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple was like, yeah, you gotta think about this. Like, I watched Jeopardy when I was six. So what the? F I still can't watch Jeopardy. <laughs> uh, I I just what the worst part about it is going to be, they're gonna do the same thing to it like they did with American Gladiators. It's just gonna be ob obnoxious. There there's no way you can't just reboot something. 
without because here's the thing like casting is open for it now anyone that is going to be on that show wants to be on that show because they want to be on tv and if they want to be on tv it means they have to have their moment and everyone's going to try to be that funny guy or gal and the host is going to try to one-up each other and it's just gonna suck you're thinking it's, way too much into this because think about it why was anyone on any of those nick shows to begin with they well they were kids and they wanted to have fun right and uh, they wanted to win a pair oh of right it's not going to be kids right no, it's adults. That's why. That's where it's completely different. If it were kids, it'd be one thing. Cause yeah. kids just want to have fun and oh, and kids wanting to be on TV. I is, think yeah. I think kids adults honestly, wanting to be on TV is just weird. I think yeah. I think kids weren't as much wanting to be on TV as I want to go be on Guts because I want to do this. Yes, it's the same reason I want to do. Like I would, I would be mortified to be on American Ninja Warrior. Like if the cameras were rolling, but I would yeah. fucking kill to have a crack at that course. Oh, I would, I would face plant right into the water. I wouldn't make it like one step. Well, that, yeah, like, the I mean, hopping back and forth thing. Yeah, I, I, I like, but yeah. I'm, I'm like a, like a, a, a fucking cat with eight lives. Yeah, I, I would scramble through that like no one's business. I mean, anything that required upper body strength, I'd be in the water. But all the nimble stuff, you know, the balance things. Yeah. Well, I have amazing upper body strength. It's just that, like. I have the upper body strength of like a chimp, but uh, I have the mass of a rhino. So <laughs> it's oh, just like just like I do. I have I, it's like really strong. Oh, you should do squats. I do every time I bend over. I'm doing squats. No, I don't. I okay. Yes. You you so you with your upper bo- upper body strength and in my <clears throat> uh, balance, we could get through the course. Your balance as you take another sip. That's I haven't taken a sip. That was <laughs> oh, okay. And plus, I need a few to get my balance right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Everyone else is drinking water. You're drinking out of your giant <laughs> movie tavern. <laughs> they put a piece of fucking gaffer over the movie tavern logo. Like, must you drink out of that? Yeah, it's only glass if it's three beers. <laughs> Why don't you just have three separate beers? Um, did you see the uh, big news today? Uh, uh, is it our, Hocus uh, Pocus 2? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, I yeah. thought you were going to say something that was actually big in news, and I was making a joke. No, because this is big. Well, it's big for you. I lo- yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, I, I pitched a Hocus Pocus 2 a few years ago. I had a good idea that uh, that Swap them made them the good guys, the, the unlikely heroes. Mm-hmm. Some other evil was released, and uh, Thackeray Brinks ha- had to bring back the Sanderson sisters. To uh, I hope that's exactly what happens, and you're furious to to stop this evil. And they're uh, you know it's like Suicide Squad, but with the Sanderson sisters. Yeah, they could break the curse on them and be free souls if they just do help help out help save Earth from evil. That was my pitch. Seems like everyone's I hope, back. I hope that's exactly what it is. Yeah, well, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> <sighs> just, just because I want to, I want to picture you sitting there, like seven beers in, going, "Well, that's my idea. That's my idea." Why not? Not, not that I want, I want to see you sad in any way whatsoever who needs money when i have the companionship of the rad years podcast yeah uh and that's being said should we start the show i i think we can yeah it's uh this is gonna be a fun one we're talking retro soda or retro pap or retro coke <laughs> or whatever you call it we call it soda here on the east coast but if yeah sorry if, if you just travel to the west side of our state, they call it pap. <laughs> and sometimes Diana says, "I can have a," or Enchantress says, "I can have a pap," <laughs> <laughs> with her Toledo accent, pap. Uh, but I guess down south they call all soda Coke, right? Yeah, everything's Coke down there. 
That made me think. Is, I, is that yeah. what Jinx buy me a Coke? Is it just buy me a soda? Or is it like buy me a Coke? And what does Coke have to say about that? What if you order a Coke and get a Pepsi? Donnie would be like, oh, that's not okay. <laughs> we're we're senior frogs. And he's like, oh, I'm a Coke. And she's like, is Pepsi okay? <laughs> no, but I guess so. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like Kleenex, you know. So you order a Sprite Coke. I'll have a Sprite Coke or a Pepsi Coke. Yeah, how does that work? Or Dr yeah, Pepper Coke work? or a root beer Coke, Coke. What kind of Coke do you have? We we have Coke. We have Sprite. We have Diet Coke. We have Coke Zero. <laughs> uh, can I get a glass of water? Nope. You can have a Coke. You got water Coke. <laughs> Is that here at a seltzer? I have a water Coke. <laughs> a water Coke. <laughs> Hell fire. I, I he see, just ordered a water Coke. I see a, a YouTube show here. Two obnoxious northeast assholes going down south. and well, Golly, there ain't no sugar in that water Coke. How do you even taste it? <laughs> the sweet tea ain't sweet enough. I can keep going on, alienating half of our audience. <laughs> it's all right. They don't have internet down there. <laughs> uh, or teeth from all the sweet tea. <laughs> yeah. I can't. No, it's okay. I have a cousin in Arkansas, so that that's. No. Yeah, yeah, I get. I we get. I, we get a pass. You get a pass. I have cousins in Florida. I think who there lost all their teeth from drinking. Uh, sweet that's tea. not even the South anymore. That's a whole other. Well, they're from, like, Daytona Beach, so it kind of is. No. I don't know. They're from, or maybe West Palm. I don't know where the hell they're from. They're in Florida. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we are talking soda. Um, do you remember, it's been it's been a week since we've done one of these. Who goes, what did we even talk about? Blockbuster Even members. more. I think you went first the last show, right? Yes, I did go first last so show. So I right. am the first one up. On this week's show. Here it is. This summer reminder is brought to you by Pepsi. Better get yours before Shaq gets it all. The summer of 93, Shaq became well, Shaq became the biggest athlete in the world playing for the Orlando Magic and literally the biggest athlete in the world because he's a massive son of a bitch. It's pleasing. Mm-hmm. He's a big bastard. I love me some Shaq. And I had... With a, with a heart of gold. Heart, heart of gold. I had Shaq fever. I love Jordan. And I mean... NBA, so this all right. The Sixers are in the playoffs, and I'm I'm torn, Squeezer. I enjoyed right now. The Sixers have are they the number one seed in the East. Oh, okay. Are you? I didn't know. I didn't know there was basketball even on right now. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't sure where you're getting at with your shtick, but there's no shtick. I I'm clueless as to what you're talking about. So there's a sport where you dribble a leather round orb and toss I it. I watch it when I get paid to see it. So you you've never been an NBA fan? Uh never. Like ba- I liked it in uh I I bought in on the whole like this era, like like the whole dream team bulls shtick, but I actually didn't probably ever watch a game. Ah. Uh, I used to watch pretty much as as for how i mean i when i was a kid i played all i did was play sports outside and i all i did was fucking watch sports i watched cartoons and sports it's all you watch and then occasional movies on tape but there wasn't really much else to watch unless you wanted to watch bad fucking procedurals or shit like that but sports so and tnt and tbs uh, you know, you could always guarantee there is a baseball game if you could watch someone hope hopefully they beat the Braves someone beats the Braves tonight uh, we had Prism too, so I watched a lot of Sixers. Uh, I never watched hockey. That was the one sport I never got into, which is probably the only sport you watched, right? For yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 
a NASCAR, right? You, your dad was a NASCAR. Yeah, it was big, but that was that was uh, that was Sundays. So. Uh, my dad didn't watch any sports. My brother didn't watch any sports. Mom didn't watch any sports. I loved them all. I'd sit in my room and I had this little like foam hoop, and I'd play along with the games and just slam dunk <laughs> on my door. Um, I uh, loved basketball. I was a, a Sixers fan, Charles Barkley. Then I liked Charles Barkley with the Phoenix Suns. Then I liked uh, – I always liked Michael Jordan, uh, and I loved Dennis Rodman. I loved Penny Hardaway and Shaq. I just loved the NBA when I was a kid, and I loved that the dream team, that they all came together like the Avengers and just whooped every <laughs> other country's ass. And, like, you are proud of it. And, like, this is – basketball is no better – in the world than it is in America. And that's what probably made basketball better all over the world. The dream team. They're like, holy shit. These, these guys are the Avengers of basketball. We got to get better. It's just like yep. with, with Tony Stark comes worse villains. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, like, but the Avengers went and rather than fight an invading alien horde, they beat up a little nerdy kid for his lunch money. What do you mean? The Olympics. Yeah, I mean, just because the teams couldn't compete, yes. they didn't. They couldn't compete. They pulled Jordan it, in the second quarter. It was a massacre. <laughs> Depending on what time the game was on, they pulled Jordan for ratings. Yeah. They All right, Michael, calm down. <laughs> you have 47 <laughs> points, and it's the first period, first quarter. Uh, that being said... Shaq, Penny Hardaway, Magic. I bought it. I was big in the Shaq. I had the, I had some toys from Lenko, um, and I had Shaq Fu for SNES Squeezer. I rented it. I rented it. I got Genesis. it. I got it cheap from KB. That being said, I still had it and played it. And yeah. my project in eighth grade's like uh, visual design class where we cut the film to make. Uh, like screen printing. Yes. Was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Was Shaq I was awful was, at it? But the it was Shaq Fu fun. logo. Ooh, Shaq. That's got to be some. Oh, like j- the the text. No, the whole like the whole logo on the box. Oh, the... Yeah. Oh, nice. It was a little. It wasn't too hard, but it was a little. He he let me do it because it was like this is challenging enough. But then like mm-hmm. my friend Jared and and Jared Hacker, he's a he's a comedian. He does some funny stuff on YouTube. You find him. He is so talented. He did um, not smoke. Who was the yellow Cyrax? He did Cyrax for Mortal Kombat Three. Ooh, and it was beautiful. And it was only you know it was only one press, one color. So, mm-hmm. you know he had to he had to, he had to monotone it. It was really he did a beautiful job. I forgot. I forgot what I did mine for. I I did I bought a mirror. That was the only thing I paid for, and then I just did the poster boards. For everything else, uh, I I still have the mirror somewhere. Hmm, it's a really cool project. I did more in middle school than than anything. We we did we sandblast. I sandblasted a sign. Yeah, we did some really cool shit in middle school. Yeah, I did I did a ton of welding. Yeah, I, I made. Um, a, I used a, and I, we would make like games, like like where the teacher would let us just go in the back and just make shit. So like. You know, like the 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 basketball game where you like put the little ball in the spring and like fling the basketball up into the hoop. Yes. Like I made one of those like out of metal, like the basket and everything, and made a little flicker and used pennies and stuff. Uh, we all I made had... a little hockey one. Like... It wasn't like free. Like if you, I think, in ninth grade took the elective, you had more free time to do things. But like leading up to it, um, you just there was a project you made, like the cold class made. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I Sam no. Boston, this was this was seventh seventh grade. I think. Yeah, we didn't have that freedom till like ninth grade. In ninth grade in wood shop, that's when I I became like the master at the sandblaster. So I'd take requests, and then like I, I'd sit there and have to paint. The painting was the hardest, but he he'd let me make whatever I want. But I had to stain and paint it right. So some girl I knew wanted a Tommy Hilfiger logo on a sign because Tommy Hilfiger, as much as it's like back in popularity now, was like hugely popular then. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this will be easy. It's just four squares and Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, so we stained the whole thing, and then he made me paint the the words Tommy Hilfiger blue, and then and I, so 
you think that's easy, but you have to use a precision brush or you're going to slop it onto the stain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and when I, I when I fucked up, he made me take it to the sandblaster and sand it off and redo it. Oof. Yeah. But I, the girl loved the sign. I don't think she ever knew it learned my name, though. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. She got what she wanted, and you um, got what you deserved. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> this is all to talk about soda. So Shaq in 1993 was hired to be a spokesman for Pepsi, which launched a new competitive sports drink against Gatorade called Power Sport, which was lightly carbonated and very delicious. I fucking love Power Sport. He was also a spokesman for Pepsi, and they launched a one-liter – uh, bottle the the called the Big Slam, and I don't know if it wasn't worldwide or what, but because I you cannot find like half the world's Big Slam collection is owned by me, like I own <laughs> I own a, a unopened case of Big Slam Pogs. I owned an open case with one with all the packs still like intact. I own thanks to um. Nostalgia Attic, he hooked me up all the way across the country. He found a mint in bag inflatable Pepsi Big Slam bottle, uh, and he got that for me. Uh, and I have some other f- – a few Big Slam pieces, but there's not much out there. And if you Google uh, you it could, – You could start a museum. Yeah, the Pepsi Big Slam. I, I would... Go to Whitehall Mall. You probably don't have to even pay for a spot. It's like, <laughs> hey, I want to put a Big Slam museum in here. Yeah. So you can't even like find like an empty bottle, and I have so many empty cans and bottles in my Pepsi collection. I have a weird Pepsi collection, which helped win me the Pepsi Peeps, which I will be reviewing soon. The one can is chilling in my fridge, and the other will go locked away in my collection. <laughs> but uh, I was tempted. In my basement, I have like the cool berry flavored Pepsi flavors that were released in the late '80s. I have unopened cans of that. Uh, I was, and I have, I have some cans of one of your picks. So I had a few to pick from that it was in my Pepsi collection, but I went with big slam because I was in fear. I'm fatuated with, and I got the regular Pepsi big slam. Like when you're a kid for 99 cents, you might have a dollar, a buck and change to go back to the Texaco and shop squeezer. And you got to make the most of that. And if you get a liter of soda instead of like a, a 16 ounce or a can, that's a big fucking deal. to someone who normally wasn't allowed to have soda yeah it was yeah we weren't a, a soda household no at all that was that was a big treat have all the juice you want just don't carbonate it exactly i know that's just so weird <laughs> that's so weird yeah there's five less grams of sugar in this kool-aid so drink it by the gallon yeah no sugar no soda well, orange juice was still good for you back then yeah, our friend Captain drank a gallon of it <coughs> before his shot. Bless you. <coughs> Sorry. One more. Gesundheit. You are so good looking. <coughs> so they say in Seinfeld. Anyway, uh, yeah. Like orange juice is any bad. They're like, drink it with breakfast. This is breakfast soda. That's not carbonated. <laughs> part part of this nutritious breakfast, and it's uh, this is a bowl ni- of ster- a sugary cereal, orange juice, some bread. Right. This is uh, the road to diabetes. <laughs> breakfast. Uh, but yet, if, if you saw like someone's like, you should have this for breakfast, and it's like a bunch of bacon and eggs, it's like you're better off eating that. That, yeah, that was like labeled the unhealthy. You don't want this unhealthy <laughs> grease for breakfast. Well, if you're eating keto and trying to lose weight, you do. <laughs> yeah. But also maybe sp- leave off the five or six, you know, sausage links and, and uh Right. But also that is also you're supposed to have an active lifestyle to eat keto and Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm just bacon's just delicious. So So I found this article from the Beaver Dam, Wisconsin Daily Citizen, uh, on June nineteen ninety, June fourteenth, nineteen ninety three, 
So it said, uh, it's written by Cynthia Mitchell of the New York Times News Service. It says, you may love or loathe Coca-Cola's animated polar bears, think it's cool or crass that Shaquille O'Neal is Pepsi's new pitch man, or maybe you couldn't care less. But there's one front in the cola wars that's scarcely avoidable, even if you're sworn off the tube and canceled all your magazine subscriptions. <laughs> that, that was like <laughs> staying off your phone in 1993. Uh, that's Coca-Cola and Pepsi's much more subtle but not less important strategies to get more of their products in your hand and your home through store placement and packaging. And with the recent onslaught of new beverages stalling the growth of colas, the tactics are becoming increasingly important in efforts to boost sales, beverage experts say. Uh, Pepsi is crowding the already crowded convenience store aisles with ice-filled tubs of wide-mouth one-liter Big Slams Double the standard serving size, uh, single serving bottle. It's t- uh, so that's exactly what I remember being so cool. It had a big, like, right, I think maybe two inch mouth to it. Yeah, it was like a Gatorade bottle, right? But it was slimmer, it wasn't as fat but, as a yeah. Gatorade bottle. Yeah, and, it, and it, had was a, like a, it had a yellow cap on the top of it, and it mm-hmm. stood out, and they were on the bottom, like, shelf, like, because they didn't have the ice tub. But that would have been fucking awesome. Nothing is colder than ice cold. Like when you cool something on ice, you can't yeah. get colder than that. It's different. It's yeah. the, it hits different. It slaps as the kids say. I don't know if I'm using that term right. I tried to be cool for a second. <laughs> You're talking to a guy that doesn't know that basketball is going on right now. So yeah. I'm a little out of touch. And what I was getting at the basketball is I'm torn. As much as I love basketball, I haven't really watched the Sixers since they kind of like ta- like went to tank to get better draft picks. Mm-hmm. Now that they're in the playoffs, do I get hop right back on the bandwagon and watch it? It's Philadelphia. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> All right. Even though I watch the Phillies when they suck, so I think this is That's different this because is fair. you actually enjoy baseball. I mean, I guess I enjoy, you enjoy basketball, basketball yeah. but I don't know. I can I can always watch my team suck at baseball for, mostly because that's what you're used to seeing. Oh, did you watch last night? Uh, well, no, no, I had to deal with the, you know, I was playing dad. Uh, no, apparently you weren't. From what you told me, you would have been able to watch it. What were you doing? Well, I was trying to, I fell asleep playing what were, dad. What were you doing? Tell me exactly what you were doing. What? I want to know. I fell asleep. Oh, that's not as fun. Uh, no, but it, it got the kids to sleep, so. I fell asleep putting the kids to sleep, and then they, by the time they uh, woke up screaming, the game was over. So, good now, times. Pepsi Big, Big Slams was purely a marketing gimmick, something that the Simpsons would make fun of. Like, take a normal liter of cola, you know, Farva would have ordered it, and Jack would have been like, here you go, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your liter of cola. But, you know, they stuck Big Slam on it, made a yellow cap and my wide mouth and the, yeah. the Shaq gimmick. And all of a sudden, it's all I, for 99 cents, it's all I wanted to buy. But in her article, she even says it's twice the size of a regular bottle and serving size. But I don't think that's accurate, right? Because isn't a bottle usually even two servings? The standard single serving bottle. I mean, she didn't say... Standard okay. single serving. Gotcha. And back then there were 16 ounces, not 20, remember? Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was a lot about something I've talked a lot about, but I wanted to bring a little different element to it this time. Here's your first pick, Mr. Squeezer. Take me away. Sunkiss Summer Sweepstakes, win a Yamaha Wave Runner 500 or hundreds of other prizes. See store displays or watch Beach MTV for details. Diabetes and a concussion. From wait, 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 wait. Start runner. again. I didn't have you up. Say that again. Start again. Ah, damn it. So you get diabetes and a concussion. 
jet skis are one of the leading causes of con- concussions in civilian populations. Would you believe me and a friend of mine you know, Tommy, almost died on a jet ski? Uh, well, as soon as he said, would you believe, and my head go, my brain immediately went to, he did something stupid with Tommy on a jet ski. <laughs> we almost killed the uh, a wrestling, college wrestling superstar, too. John Trench. Jesus too. Christ. <laughs> So when I'm going through this list, I'm like, what are my, what's my favorite soda to start off with? I'm like, all right, my favorite soda is birch beer. I'm like, shit, all right, I can't talk a whole lot about that other than it's just delicious and it's clear and good for you, I guess. Uh, not two, all I guess, clear, would be root beer. What's that? It's it's not uh, white. It's only white birch beer is clear. Yeah, white birch beer. Yeah, yeah, white birch beer is number one. And then I and then I would go with root beer, and we can we get it onto that. And then probably a cream soda. Yeah, cream soda is good, but then orange soda is amazing. And so I would say orange soda is my fourth favorite of the soda varieties. Oh man! So when and Jake and I brought in that sun kiss and root beer, that's why those cases are like empty already. That's why they're gone. So, and I wouldn't even have looked. So. I and so I'm picking. I, I pick Sunkissed. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go out and get me a Sunkissed because I haven't had it in forever. Because I try, even though I'm a you know walking um, weight bench, uh, I I haven't had a Sunkissed in a while. So I was gonna go get one. I open up the fridge for some reason, and lo and behold, there's Sunkissed in there. I mean, it's the sugar free stuff, but hey, what the hey? I'll give it a try. And so like ten of those later. And doing my research, I'm like, that was a lot of fun and delicious. <laughs> it was really good. The only difference, it's not as thick. Like, you don't, because there's no sugar, that film. Doesn't coat your tongue the way it used that, to. That, that coating, that, that, that Coke clinginess that you get on your teeth and tongue just isn't there. So it's just a little different. Um, Sunkiss goes back 1979. Um, and it, uh, is the brainchild of this guy, Max Stevens, who worked at General Mills, who oversaw all the, uh, uh, well, General Mills products. And they had a ton of, like, orange-flavored stuff back then, like, a, like orange cake mix and orange frosting. But it was all licensed through um, Sunkist, like the actual, like, yep. orange growers. Like, so, like, all these companies, like, oh, we need something orange-flavored. So they would just latch on to the orange people and be like, Oh, it's like it's from oranges. No, they just sold the name. And they're like, well, we have, there's already an orange soda out there. Fanta has been out there, uh, it's been in the U.S. since the 50s, and since, it's been around even longer Adolf in Germany. Hit- Hitler invented it. Yeah. And because like, they wouldn't, we don't want no, we don't want no Nazi soda here. They wouldn't export Coke to Germany anymore. So he said, fuck it, make our own soda called, called yeah. Fanta. Uh, and and they made it out of like leftover like fruit scraps and shit. Uh, and it wasn't until like later in the fifties when they added like the orange color and shit to it. Uh, but they wanted to make an orange soda because they saw like there's a hole in the market for non-Nazi um, orange soda. And they went, they went like a squeezer all in on this. There was like years of research, and they end up dumping twenty million dollars of potential profits into pushing Sunkist uh, to make it like the number one. They wanted to be number one. They, in their minds, thought that they were going to take out Coke and Pepsi, uh, or at least if not, they can get to number three. And it was so it was licensed from Sunkist, but do you know who like produced it and bottled it? Uh, Coke. G- General Cinemas. General Cinemas? So, yes, the movie chain back in the day was the owner of the largest independent soda bottler in the country. And it, it's one of those things. It's not like the guy that it takes tickets is also. Well, well now that's soda, like a conglomerate with. It's, yeah, Keurig. it's a conglomerate thing. Coke, Keurig over... owns it, right? It's like Keurig, yeah. Dr. Pepper, Snapple. 
It, it turns out I think almost every one of my picks is NW. either owned or bottled by Keurig Dr. Pepper. Yeah. It, they're a monster now. And um but uh, and then, so they had it they had that license and then what happened was so we'll just go down the license chain and then they sold it to uh I think Cadbury had it and then Cadbury broke up and then it went that's when it became Keurig Dr. Pepper a couple of years ago. Um, it was uh, Cadbury General Schweppes. Sips. It was Cinema. Cadbury Schweppes. Cadbury, yeah. What did I say? You said Cadbury had it. It was the Cadbury Schweppes. There was a soda yeah. name in there, the Schweppes oh. ginger ale. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's British. Yeah. And I, out of all ginger ales, uh, gin, uh, Schweppes is my favorite of my ginger ales. I can't. Canada Dry is just too dry. Hmm. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was 1980, 89, uh, is when General Cinema. That's why you might not think of them as a bottler, because in '89 they sold their bottler to Pepsi, so they got out of business and sold their bottling facilities to Pepsi, and then they got out of it. Um, but they went like all out trying to make this the best. There, there was taste tests, um, color tests. Uh, over, I, I, I'm trying to confirm this because it seems crazy, but it could be something as simple as tweaking font sizes by individual pixels. So that's why it might be so much. But 300 million options for packaging hmm. that they went through to get it right. Uh, and then they launched it in a New York test market because it was like, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Okay. So that was their idea. They launched New York, and it took off. And then in two years, by like 1980, they had a 1.5% market share of the soda business in the U.S., which you might not think isn't a lot, but the number three and number four ranked sodas were 7-Up and Dr. Pepper, and they each had a 6% share. And they were well-established. That's how big Coke and Pepsi are at that point, because... Even like your number three and four are combined only twelve percent of the market. Mm -hmm. So one point five percent after being out for only two years isn't bad. Uh, by nineteen eighty, it was the number one orange soda in the country, uh, and it was the number ten ranked soda overall. Uh, and me personally, out of all my all of out of all your orange sodas. Uh, Sunkist is numero uno to me. I I think it tastes there. There is definitely a taste difference. It's not just plain orange soda. I gotta go Sunkist. What what other orange sodas are there? Well, there's the Fanta. Oh yeah. The minute the uh, Minute Maid, which is actually mm. a Coke product. That's just Coke licensing Minute Maid and making their own. Uh, and then, you know, the, like the, all the little independent bottlers. I mean, A-Treats is all right, but I prefer. I, I, I actually will pass that up to go with a Sunkist. And that and their, the, their 1990 can, I think, might be my favorite soda can. It's just so simple yet awesome. It's just the, the sun with the lines bursting out from with the logo. And it's just, I thought that the 1990 Sunkiss can I thought was the best, and that's also when I was probably drinking the most Sunkiss too in the early nineties. Yeah, well, that's ninety three. I was chugging Big Slam liters of Pepsi, so hmm. you're always looking for the new. Yeah, let's see. I had no allegiances. I I I take it you were a brand kid like early on. Yeah, and not uh, yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't even just like uh, loyal to them. It's just like that's the one that I like. Now, see, I would try everything and anything. I had no loyalties. At the late any new bottle in the fucking uh, um, display, I I got it. I I tried it. it no matter if, <laughs> no matter how horrible Joust it tasted, I still tried it. <laughs> I'm still to this well, day. The only I, thing love I, new, stay... I love something new. Sorry. And to this day, I was saying if I, I had to uh, stay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just keep talking over each other. Right. Ready? One, two, three, go! Two, three. But... <laughs> go. Mine isn't that important, so you no, might as well talk. No, no, you, no, mine's not important either. This entire <laughs> show's not important, so... To no, be fair. 
Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Who's going to balk first? I think you have to so we can move on. Okay. Because I forgot what I was going to say, quite honestly. That's right. No. Now, if I if I did it to stay loyal to a brand, though, I went local and I did like an A treat. Yeah. Treat up was delicious. What was treat up? Uh, it was like a lemon lime kind of. Oh right, it was right. Like their own little I was thing. red cream soda all day, every oh, fucking I, I still day. get that when I go over to uh, Carl's. To get my monstrosity of a cheeseburger sub, yeah, always get a, a and but I'll get a diet to be healthy. Yeah, well, when we're um, at we're at the velodrome, I get the I get the diet cream soda at the velodrome. Yeah, I get a diet cream soda go with my four Carl's patty cheeseburger disgusting. sub and large uh, curly fry. Yeah, it's, that's yeah. gonna make a difference. Yeah, you really just should go all out and get the sugared version. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. My next pick. This, co- this commercial will make zero sense, just like my last commercial kind of made zero sense. Oh, to give context, if what you heard my last commercial, it sounded like something drinking, and it was it was like a new thing. It was Shaq drinking a Big Slam, and as he drank it, all everyone's Pepsi from around the world would drain mysteriously. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could picture it. Yeah, you can. I the pain in the picture burned in my mind. mind. Here is my next pick. Surge, it's a fully loaded citrus soda with carbos. Beat the rush. Yeah, uh, what killed this soda, Surge, was that it had extra carbohydrates in it. Oh. Well, carb carbs are good for you when you're, like, you know, <clears throat> running a race or, you know, in a physical activity. That's energy that you need, you know, as an athlete. Right. Well, two years later, everyone's like, why did this die? Well, the Atkins diet and C2 and you remember C2, uh-huh. Coke 2? The low yeah. carb Coke, yeah. The Atkins diet thing came out, and everything was low carb. And Surge got killed. So as quick as Surge rose to popularity, they didn't want a soda with extra carbos. <laughs> There's some other fucking chemical in it that made it give you a fucking jolt. I don't know. I love this shit. When I was in high school, this was the old high school squeezer, the one on three hundred nine. Okay. Yep. So um, when when Surge came out, I would leave for the day. Uh, my best friend, Matt, his older sister, Allie, she would drive me to school and drive me home most days because we lived right down the street. So it was no big deal. Uh, and I'd get out of school. She was a grade above me. And I'd get out of school and go. Uh, there was like a, a breezeway between the auditorium. And I really can't even picture it. But in the one side, there was a fucking Coke machine. Ooh, you had a breezeway. We did, but we had a Coke. Did you have a Coke machine in your mach- your building? Um, they did, but it was like lo- it was back by the gym, and they would actually shut it down or like lock it down or unplug it during the day, so we couldn't get to it. Why would why even have it then? Uh, for like sporting events. Uh, ah, yeah. this wasn't even by the gym. This was over by the auditorium. It was it was basically made for <clears throat> kids to get a soda on their way out. Pretty much. Huh. So I usually got a cherry Coke leaving work for our school. Uh, but then this magical soda appeared in it called Surge. Oh, my God, Squeezer. Did I love this soda? I was completely hooked. <laughs> I got a Surge every fucking day. I had those garbos flowing through my system as I came home to smoke weed and play fucking <laughs> not, uh House of the Dead 2 on Dreamca- on the Japanese Dreamcast with my friend Joe Orkin. Man, that was fun times. Now, this soda uh, was a, a, a Coke's response to how popular Mountain Dew started becoming in the 90s. Uh, and then became... Uh, Mellow Yellow was not the competitor they wanted, so they came up with Surge. And 
then the carb, the like low carb thing happened in the early 2000s and they killed surged off. But Mountain Dew just became more popular and more popular. And people were like, we want surge back. We want surge back. And these three douchebags created a surge Facebook or MySpace or whatever. And then they launched Vault. Remember Vault? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Vault lasted in 2010, lasted like a week. I think it was in stories. It was like, yeah, this is kind of surge. It might taste like it. It might remind you of something. Yeah, try it out. It's from the vault. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. But yeah, it wasn't. People were buying the name and the, the, the weird green icky flavor. And I watched this, this surge do- documentary by this kid who looked like he could join our crew <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> Be nice, and he's. I, I'm. I'm being mean. I, I, I'm either being nice to him or mean to us. Oh, so you don't know. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, he said in the documentary that Surge was based on a soda in Scandinavia called Urge, uh, but. It was really popular there, and it still exists there, but they brought it here and called it Surge. But the the logo looks very similar. We, we drink, was, we drink was there Urge a logic? in Finland. Uh-uh. Uh, was there a logic behind the extra carbs? or Carbos, dude, to get you through your okay. extreme sports. <laughs> yeah, it was like proto-energy drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because remember, when the energy drink craze first started, there were no sugar-free variants. It was like Red Bull, Monster, mm-hmm. you know, it was all like full sugar, carbohydrate. Yeah, it, it wasn't like it wasn't like oh, vitamin B and all that. Sh- no, 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 they no. had vitamin B. It was taurine. Taurine, taurine was the big one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but every it really was just it was Monst- a sugar. Rush. Monster and Rockstar were the big vitamin B people. Not Red Bull in particular, but then the you know people are like I can't. So now like the most popular of there's there's more sugar free variants of those drinks than there are sugar versions. Like you could find there's whole lineups now that just are sugar free mm-hmm. like Rain and C4 and Bang, <laughs> those drinks that make you feel like you just did some meth in the back alley. <laughs> Talk about getting a film on your tongue squeezer. Get yourself a bang energy no. drink or a rain energy drink. Um, a rain. I'm good. I, get I'm... yourself a rain cotton candy. Car- <laughs> oh, it's called carnival oh. candy. Eh, My eyes are watering already. No, you you and, see what I bring to work. When and, I... and if you can make it through a whole can, that's like an accomplishment. I don't know how little Dave drinks like multiple cans a day of that rain shit. And, he, and bang. Fuck, man. That shit. It explains a lot. It does. It never. It, it, does it stunt your growth? <laughs> well, he started smoking, I think, when he was seven. <laughs> True. Um, but y- you you see the thermos of black coffee that I consume over the course of one hockey game. So I I don't know. Like the sugar would definitely affect me differently. But there's no sugar in it though. Of, and what? Oh, all those. And the bang in the rain. There's and none. The bang. But oh. you. But, but there's... you still get that like. Oh, yeah, because there's so much artificial sweetener. Oh. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, it gets you really and – it, and there's chemicals in it that makes your skin crawl. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's when, like, when next, time we're, next time we're out at a, at a Wawa, like point one out, like that's what you want. And... Have you ever had a pre-workout? Mm. Like the mix? I've never had a workout. <laughs> like pre-workout you take before you like lift yeah, I, or something. You mix it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, this is – that's what this is. It's pre-workout in a can. That's how it's marketed. Ah, and it's got all those amino acids and shit in it. Oh my god! I think it makes you sterile. How, how many? How many? <laughs> how many people though actually get it as a pre workout or just like I? I used to when uh back in the day when I was a a young lad and I would uh, propagate the bars and then we would head to a sheets and get a bunch of garbage to get us through the evening. Um, but I would get handfuls. Of those meal bar, like those chocolate peanut butter meal bars, what? they're like a thousand calories each. Why? Like the point is, it's like the point is, is to like you know eat one of those in place of a meal, like before a workout or after a workout. Right. And I would eat like six of those. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why? 
<laughs> because they were, I thought they were delicious and they were big. What like so the, I'd eat, the cliff I'd bars? Eat those and then no, no, not a cliff bar. No, these are like giant meal replacement bars. They were enormous. And and they lay in your stomach like a, like a lead. Wait, now it might have also been the cheesesteak and the mac and cheese that I was having with it, along with you know a couple Rolling Rocks. Jesus but uh, you had these. They sell these at Sheets. I don't know if they still do, but they had a, it was like an end cap, and I I would get like a half a dozen of these things. Like oh, it's like a can. It's like a Snickers but bigger. Like you a, know me, bang for the buck, right? It's like a Snickers, backed with whey powder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no wonder I was so jacked. <laughs> that stuff's usually so expensive. Like I, I, uh, I, I, I wasn't driving. If that explains it. <laughs> ah. Yeah, because I know Squeezer holds on the nickels like manhole covers generally. <laughs> All right, I think we were talking about Surge, but they it came back. Those three doofuses got it to come back. Um, why? Why do you say doofuses? Just the, the the way in which they. I I don't know. I guess I'm I'm just projecting. <laughs> Jealous much? Yeah. The I, cans were sick. They were very. It was very nineties. Yeah, uh, it, and it belongs in those three years in the nineties. That's where Surge was born, and that's where it will die. It came back on Amazon exclusive. Of course, no one could get it. But then, like, three weeks later, after people bought cans for $50 on eBay, they showed up at, like, Sheets mm. and everywhere. And, and I think Burger King had a a, a Surge Squishy drink. and uh, Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Nonetheless, that was my second pick. We are so you're really... saying if I hold out long enough, I can get a PlayStation 5 at a Sheets soon? <laughs> we are really breezing through this show. I, I think I'm in a matter zooming. of time, yeah. Uh, I'm sure at Bucky's you can get a PS5. Ooh. Here's Squeezer's next bit. RC Cola can refresh, revive, renew. RC Cola can really get to you. Cola love in one man. Cola love in man. Nothing really gets to you like RC Cola can. Nothing really gets to you like RC Cola can. Play the Cola Lovers game. Check for details at your participating retailer. No purchase necessary. No purchase necessary. All right, now to go through the long, arduous history of RC Cola. <clears throat> oh, yay. Back in 1806. Uh, all right, we all know what RC Cola is. It's like the, the bastard stepbrother to Coke and Pepsi. Well, it actually is kind of so like it came from a grocery store owner in georgia who used to have coke because back then you used to get the syrup and you know mix it yourself sell it that mix it yourself and do it that way well this, he was doing such good business like he went to coke he's like hey i'm doing good business for you guys can i get a little thing like, uh, little package you give me a little kickback or something like that and you're like no go to hell and he's like all right well this can't be too hard i'm gonna make my own so he went and then yeah i made his own Royal Crown soda. And it became Royal Crown. And it, it couldn't, for a while, you couldn't call it cola because, like, in the 40s and 50s, Coke sued. And, like, no, we own the rights to cola. So only Coca-Cola was allowed to be called cola. And then the courts are like, no, it's cola. You can't copyright that. And that's when, you know, they became Royal Crown Cola again. Yeah, you can't and copyright. Pepsi Cola and all that. You can't copyright a recipe. That's why they have to keep it such highly guarded. Secret. Yeah. Uh, anyway, like, I'm not I'm really talking copy. about RC Cola per se, but the one thing when you think of RC Cola, what stands out to you? Uh, how, if you got RC Cola, how did you get it? I don't think I, I – I'll be honest with you, oh. Squeezer. I never okay. had RC Cola in my entire life. Really? It's it's fine. It is what it is. But okay, I I thought like in your house, like I I could assume like because I'm talking my three dad, liter bottles here. My dad wouldn't even buy Pepsi because he goes, oh, it tastes like monkey piss. When I got old enough, I was like, how do you know what monkey <laughs> piss tastes like? Shut up, Brad. He was a so Coke I... and only Coke man squeezer. Mm. 
So when I think of either Royal Crown or I think of three liter bottles, it's one and the same to me. Now, and see, I love we had, having those around. We had three liter bottles, but it was the Weiss brand soda. Like my neighbor Katie would bring over the three we, th- three liter bottle of Weiss brand fruit punch soda. And yes, for for when she babysit us on New Year's, and we drink so much of it, my sister pissed on the couch. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, in her sleep. Um, in her sleep. Yeah. Uh, how, when this, when was this? Just last. Okay, it was twenty twenty one. So big deal. <laughs> um, quarantine. Yeah, it, it's you. You still will find like your your three liter bottles have kind of gone the wayside for a number of reasons, but. You you still see them, especially like dollar stores, like uh, Dollar Tree stores, like the Stars and Stripes, or like Shasta, or yeah, some store brands. You'll still you'll still find it, but there is a number of reasons you, you didn't see. It. One is they're just it's it, not a pleasant experience for the customer because they're heavy, they're bulky, um, and also the big reason was, uh. Uh, two big reasons. One is marketing. They can never get the idea across that by buying three liters versus two, you're saving more money. Like, it just wasn't in their, like, marketing to try to push this. And the returns on that just weren't there. But also, you have to put bottles on a line and fill bottles. And to have an extra line filling three liter bottles cost a ton of money. To retrofit or build well, new well, why lines. Why did the cheapest just... companies make make it and not Coke? I don't know. I think just because there was no... more efficient with it. Coke, the, the the cost to make Coke and the cost to make store brand Coke, cola mm-hmm. are, are exactly the same. It's the marketing that costs so yeah. much with Coca Cola. Yes, uh, the three liters is just is a gimmick. It, it was it, like the three liter thing was a gimmick, just like um, the big slam was just a it, it had bigger. the big mouth on it, too. I, if I remember. Yes. Yeah, it did. And that that's why I, I will get to that. Why I love them so much. Good piss um, jokes. But, well, yeah. but Co- I think Coke looked past that. It's like they're not interested. They didn't see any value in that. Um, what was great about the three liter bottles was they were the perfect thing for every home project that you ever needed. Because the the biggest, the best thing that they're for, and if I needed to go and make one right now, I will, and I might get one just to have handy in case of a survival situation, crayfish traps or crawfish traps, if you're one of those people down south, in quotes. But yeah, I I would make all my crayfish traps out of the three-liter bottles. And then go up to the creek and launch I'm sorry, in. And... I'm sorry, Squeezer. Coke did have three liter bottles. Oh, did they? Yeah, I've they even never had a, they seen even them. Had a commercial. I think you could still buy them in Texas. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, right now, Eric's like, what are you guys talking about? He's just sitting there drinking directly out of a three liter bottle. Yeah, three liters. Yeah, 197. Yeah. Well, it's like when when your you know, when new, your soda glass is a liter. They introduced with new Coke. They introduced a three liter bottle. Hmm. Well, allow me to go and take my foot and insert it into my mouth. Now I only looked it up. I'm like, wait, I think I've seen three liter Coke bottles somewhere. Hmm. Sorry to shit all over your parade squeezer. No, that's all right. My parades are pretty shitty to begin with. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would make crayfish traps out of them. That was the way they, they were. They were great for that because they, they had the the big mouth. So yeah, you could unscrew that, and the little guys come right out the bottom. Well, I'll be damned. It was a good time, but it, it it's sad though because RC and just a little history thing there, uh, a little <clears throat> nugget, if you will. Um, they were so like inventive back in the day. That it's sad that they kind of just kind of never really took off, and now they are also a subsidiary of guess who? Yeah, Schweppes, uh, Cadbury, uh, who's a what's it? Uh, Keurig Dr Pepper. Keurig Dr Pepper, yes. Yeah, um, RC Cola in 1954 was the first to can a soda in an aluminum can. Yeah. 
They were the first to release 16-ounce cans or Call bottles. Boys. They were the first to release a caffeine-free soda. They were the first to go and uh, release a- and do nationwide taste tests across the board. And uh, they were the first... Not, not the first diet soda. There was a small company in New York that started making diet sodas. But they went to Royal Crown, and Royal Crown was the first was to it, was distribute it called diet right? a diet soda. It was Diet Right, Diet Right? right? Yeah. Diet Right. Yeah, my mom bought but, Diet Right sometimes. Yeah, well, there was some shit in there, and everyone loved it. And it was like the new Miracle Soda. It's going to make you thin and healthy and whatever. They had a bunch of different flavors. It wasn't just cola. Yeah, but then the 60s, the stuff that they put in it, they realized caused cancer. Mm-hmm. And that kind of put the kibosh to that and kind of destroyed the... What? No, they still sold oh, Diet Right. I think they still no, sell Diet Right. They did, but it basically took their market... Like, they changed the recipe. Ah. But the damage was already done. Yeah, they still do sell it. Yeah. But, yeah, not, not to the levels that they were back in the day. Yeah, they could have been. It could have been a big thing. Could have, could have, could have been big. Could have, yeah. All right, ready to move on to my third pick. I think we should. Here it is. Nope, nope. That's me. Ah! Sorry. I'm like, wait a second. I hit the wrong button. Austin. Don't give me that so so soda, the same old cola. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pop. I wanna Shasta, Shasta. I wanna taste possess. All the great taste, Shasta hell. I wanna pop. I wanna Shasta, Shasta. I wanna thrill. I wanna wild taste it all. I wanna now. I wanna pop. Yeah, that's the only thing I could find to talk about. Shasta, Mario. David Brothers. Burns do a Shasta commercial? Uh, maybe. This is Shasta, um, Mario Brothers soda squeezes. Do you remember these little eight ounce cans? Uh, no. I let me hang on. No, I'm no, no. Wait, lying wait, wait. if I told you right now, but if I look, right now I'm gonna say no. We got these one time and one time only. We were at the Phillipsburg Mall, and one of their anchor stores was a Kmart that you actually entered through the mall. There was a mall entrance. It was pretty crazy, a Kmart. And we were being particularly good, and they had uh, these packs of Shasta 8-ounce Mario soda. And it was it was probably like 92 or 93 or 90, yeah. My mom was like, all right, we can get some because you don't know me soda, but this is Mario. And and, and it was uh, Luigi Berry, Princess Toadstool Cherry, Yoshi Apple, and Mario Punch. And they're little fat 8-ounce cans. Now, if you want these back, you could go to change.org. And Aaron Byers has a petition to renew to, – to have Shasta – or I'm sorry, Nintendo – Renew your contract with Shasta to sell the Mario soda cans. This is their plea. That's why Change.org was invented. Right. In the early 90s, Wayne's World I have an account. Oh. hit theaters. The Simpsons was actually hilarious, and the Super Nintendo was all the rage. As a promo for the then new Super Nintendo, you guys, I guess they're referring to Nintendo, had a contract with cheap soda conglomerate Shasta <laughs> to sell Super Mario sodas. They came in four different flavors. Mario Punch, Luigi Berry, Princess Toadstool Cherry, and my personal favorite, Yoshi Green Apple. They were fantastic. Unfortunately, I recall Shasta's contract with you expiring. I ta- <laughs> Of course they did. I talked to them on their Facebook page two years ago. I guess he talked. They, uh, they talked to Shasta, and they said, Shasta said it's pronouns, pal. Said it's import. Uh, said it, something like they'd like to do it again, but they're aware that licensing is a long and difficult process. I know you could get make a lot of people who remember the Mario cans happy. Please talk to the CEO of Shasta about bringing the back the Mario cans. I would do anything to have Yoshi, 
green apple soda one last time. I know other people who would be thrilled to. And granted, I know it's asking too much, but for some of us, it's not really asking much. It will be worth it, though. Please consider, and thanks for taking the time to read this. Uh, as from six years ago, there are ten supporters. So I say we get... Uh, it's up to 51 now. Is it? No, it's just 10. I'm just... I just signed it now. No, maybe it's a different one. This petition's closed. You can't sign it anymore. Is there a new one? Send me the new one. <laughs> Let me see. So I just typed in Shasta Mario. Mm -hmm. Typing with the rack. Fifty supporter. Do 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 do. Oh, you could just copy and paste the link to me. That's the easiest way to. Copy and paste. It's Apple C and Apple V. Yeah, I know. Here, I'll put it right in the... Uh... You can't post links in there. Ah, damn it. Well, I'm on my computer. I, I can't... I don't have your... Oh, you don't have iMessage? All right, well, no, I don't have it set up right now. Closed caption, 765. Eighth grade, perfect storm surge on the way out. 25 cents for a 20 ounce at a flea market spot. We got four cases to start. New school was just pushed out of the machine. But it just fell why We bought the flea market. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um, All right. Moving on. I never saw these sodas anywhere else. They were at that Kmart and that Kmart only. And I kept asking my mom to go back and get these Mario sodas again. And I don't think she remembered that we got them. She was like, what the fuck are you talking about, you dipshit Mario soda? Like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, fuck, mom. Damn it. But no, I never saw them again. Yeah, that's not good. That's not going to get you Mario soda. Yeah. Dropping the F-bomb on your mom. Once and only. And Shasta, I don't know. They, they, My parents would cheap out on a lot of stuff. But they brought the name brand soda. So, yeah, that's that's my one running with Shasta. Here is Squeezer's next pick. Uh, um, does anyone know what the hell we just saw there? Or listen to? Uh, the taste of a know, new but... generation. Yeah. What was better? Um, I don't know if you know this exists, but someone uploaded a like 40, 30 or 45 minute like Crystal Pepsi training video to YouTube. I watched it a couple months ago. He talked about it on the show, actually. It is glorious. Um, that did they really have no idea what they were talking about uh i no they did cuz like the, the plan it, it was it was rather a poor as uh he was quoted as saying um david novak who is the who was the boss of pepsi back then and was responsible for this creation said the best idea i ever had and poorly executed uh, it, it it's the most pompously '90s thing <clears throat> there is, especially that commercial. So is two years ago, glorious consumer time capsule released Crystal Pepsi employee training video, and it's it's uh it's about 17 minutes long. I'm really concerned that selling this new Crystal Pepsi could hurt the sales of my other soft drink brands, like brand Pepsi. Like, stop tape. 
Oh my god, <laughs> this is like... I'm really concerned that selling this new Crystal Pepsi could hurt the sales of my other soft drink brands, like brand Pepsi. In test markets where we have Crystal Pepsi, Pepsi sales have actually increased. Crystal Pepsi builds traffic, which means you'll have extra sales and extra profits. Is that a robot? This is fucking <laughs> gold, man. <laughs> what the hell? What is... Um, is Tommy sending me the same gif of a cat touching its fucking balls over and over and over? Randomly. Oh, wow. Well. It's Thursday night. He probably he's at the bar. I randomly Thursday nights mm -hmm. when Tommy's drink. I don't talk to him really ever, ever. We don't have conversations, but he'll. That's now seven. Wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven copies of the GIF of the cat touching its balls. Is it a cute cat? That's a that's our funny cat. That's how Tommy okay. communicates. Though he can't use his words. <laughs> yes, it's, so, just, it's the best it's he can how do. I say I love you. Right. Yeah. So uh, from 92 to 94, uh, the earth was graced with Crystal Pepsi. And it was all part of the fad because everything was going clear. Uh, Ivory Soap kind of started this whole thing. I thought because... Tom Cruise did. What's that? I thought Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise did. Oh, yeah. Going clear. I, uh, Get it? <laughs> damn it. Yeah. So they, they jumped on, 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 the, on the clear train. And uh, it clears better for you because there's no artificial dyes or colors. Um, sure, and, and it's caffeine-free, but sure, there's still 130 calories in it, and it, it's still sugar, um, but it's clear sugar, so it's okay. Right. Um, with the tagline, you've never seen a taste like this. Oh, fucking and brilliant. You like it, or? Yeah. It's glorious. So here's a fun thing. Do you know why? So the idea was it was supposed to be Pepsi just clear. But it didn't taste exactly like Pepsi. It was off a little bit. Right. It's because the guy who invented it, uh, Surinder Kumar, who is also responsible for giving us all um, nacho cheese Doritos. Ow! Hold on. Sorry about that. The warranty on your truck is expired. <laughs> uh, Surinder Kumar, the man that brought us uh, nacho cheese Doritos, was tasked with making Crystal Pepsi. Well, they go, hey. Well, of course, the guy us... who does that, nacho cheese Doritos, Crystal Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we want you make us Pepsi and make it clear. He's like, well, there's a lot of issues with that. And he's like, just do it. I'm like, all right. Oh, can I have the recipe? No. Oh, really? What? No. So it, the Pepsi recipe was so go secretly guarded. Right. Like, only the top executives knew it. And even the food scientists that they charged with making Crystal Pepsi didn't know the recipe. So his, So Crystal Pepsi is his interpretation of trying to replicate Pepsi. And then the other big issue was, and the one that he kept pointing out to them that this is going to be a problem is, it's clear. And the bottle's clear. And that means sunlight is going to penetrate it and spoil it. He's like, there is a, he explained to them, there's a reason why colas are the color that they are and on the shelf. And Sprite is in a fucking green bottle. Exactly. Yes. That's why you don't see clear clear bottles well now you do and because there's just not well chemicals yeah there yeah well lo and behold they were putting this stuff out and it would sit there in the Turn sun brown. and people would buy it and it sold it sold in the first three months it sold almost half a billion uh in in sales but you have to continue that's because it was like the fad they saw you saw that super bowl ad that ran during Super Bowl 27, where the Bills lost for the third of fourth time. And uh, so everyone went out and like, this was, oh, we're going to get Crystal Pepsi. It's going to be amazing. And then after a half a billion people drink Crystal Pepsi, they were good. 
and it kind of just went the wayside. It didn't help that Coke went on the attack. This is the most brilliant move ever. You know about their their kamikaze attack? No. So, so Crystal Pepsi, th- there was a lot of confusion because if you watch the commercial, there's a rhino, uh, a guy riding a bike on like water with some clouds, and there's a bunch of coins being thrown on the map. And then there's Crystal Pepsi. Like, what the? What is this? And they weren't. No one. No one was quite sure exactly what it was. And Pepsi didn't exactly do a great job of telling you. So Coke decided they were going to tell you what it was. So Coke had their people make a new version of Tab Clear. Oh yes, we talked about this. Market, we we talked uh, about and, this on the show, didn't we? Did we? You you had Tab Clear as one of your picks. <clears throat> I do tab clear. You did. You did. Oh, wow. Um, and so Coke released tab clear and it would go right on the shelf with the crystal Pepsi and confuse people and be like, and by the way, tab clear tasted awful and Coke knew it and it bombed. It was horrible. No one wanted it. And because no one wanted tab clear, they saw crystal Pepsi. He's like, Oh, I'm not getting this either. And they tanked crystal Pepsi along with them. It was a brilliant move, a ruthless move. Yeah, see, I don't buy that. I don't. I never what, heard that, of, that I, it wouldn't work that way. No, I never heard of Tab Clear until you brought it up on the show a few years ago. Yeah, but you weren't the one making the purchasing decisions for you know, other than buying Mario soda. I guess. Because also, even back in nineteen ninety, like. Uh, 92, like people didn't even know what Crystal Pepsi was. There was confusion. Now we know what it is. That's why it did better <laughs> than when it was re-released a, a number of times because when they had that nostalgia thing and people already knew at this point what Pepsi, what Crystal Pepsi was versus back then it was just it, very poor. It was, I, was awesome was marketing. Crystal, was Crystal Pepsi a response to Clearly Canadian? I, I, it was all part of just the clear fat. I don't know if it was a direct response. Like, Clearly Canadian was fucking huge, and it's all we drank for a certain point. Like, every time I went to the Texaco for a while, I was just getting Clearly Canadian. Hmm. I don't know if I ever did. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of it. Orchard Peach was my favorite. Um, But the, the other thing is, and this is where I would land on this, and I remember my grandparents had some, and it's there's a disconnect with the color and the taste, and there were studies done, and like it would actually cause people anxiety because the familiarity with cola and that taste with that brown color, and when you drink something like that's clear, like Crystal Pepsi, it should either have a lemon lime taste to it, or even just a, a seltzer or something along those lines where it actually caused people anxiety and that was another reason why they didn't want to drink it. Did you get the re-release of Crystal Pepsi in 2016? I did not, no. We I walked Jake and I walked down to the Rite Aid during Music Fest. That was the year that the, one of the bands lurked, jumped out so the big truck was doing the Prince and David Bowie cover bands after they both passed away. Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah. You, were you at that show? Uh yeah, yep. I don't remember. Well, then why didn't you walk down with us and get the Crystal Pepsi? Maybe you just because before we did the show, I was, I was probably going to get some free food somewhere. I'm surprised Jake went with you. <laughs> um. Yeah, it was released August eighth, two thousand sixteen. Just two months before we started the Rad Years podcast. Wow, really? Yeah. I love the commercial parody, Crystal Gravy, on Saturday Night Live. That was fucking insane. Yes. Song. Oh, yeah. Pepsi was not happy with that. That was great. They didn't, they didn't have a very a, a great sense of humor. They found it distasteful and gross. It was. It was awesome. It was gross. It was great, though. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal Gravy. All right. 
Shall we move on there, handsome? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I thought you were. I'm like, uh, I'll no. just... You're just laying out. All right, here's mine Yeah, next. steer the ship, sir. We're, it's, uh, it's almost Friday. Wait, it is Friday. Introducing a new soft point. drink with 10% real juice. New Slice. We got the juice and I see blast. A burst of juice in every glass. 7-Up doesn't have juice. We got the <laughs> taste, we got the twist. Sprite doesn't have juice. We got the juice, the others miss. We got the juice, we got the splash. Slice, slice, we got the taste that no one has. New Slice, we got the juice. Diet too. Slice, slice. I think they stopped the, this campaign after O.J. Simpson was accused of murder. <laughs> but I'm not talking about lemon lime slice or mandarin orange slice or any other flavors of slice, but Dr. Slice. You know, I told you, like, when I'd go to the Texaco, I'd look at the soda. What were those called? The soda coolers, the coolers. Mm -hmm. And if I saw something new, I had to try it. And one and this was they were still in the glass bottles with like the foam wrap. Uh, Labels. Foam labels. Yeah, the labels were really thin foam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh in I'm looking in the cooler and there's there's slice and mandarin orange slice and then there's doctor slice. I'm like, I gotta try this. It's a Dr. Pepper knockoff. Man, for all the sodas in the world, I think there's no more knockoffs than Dr. Pepper. Would you agree? Oh, uh, you got Mr. Pib. Uh, but it's so blatant, like 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 a lemon lime yeah. soda, like Seven Up. You got Sprite. Yeah, I I, I guess because Dr Pepper is such a specific flavor, right? That you know that's a Dr Pepper knockoff. I and see and they they have to put some either Doctor or Mister or something in it to make it sound like yes, this is like 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 Doctor Wegman's at Wegman, you know, Doctor Weiss. <laughs> like that, they just put Doctor before the store name. Like this is our Dr Pepper knockoff. Um, even like uh, uh, Soda Stream has a Dr Soda Stream, Dr Stream or something version. Uh, but of course Slice, which was uh, before they had what the fuck is even their thing? Mountain or uh, Sierra Mist? Before they had Sierra Mist, Slice was Pepsi's answer to Fanta and Sunkissed and Sprite. Particularly, Sprite was their lemon lime. Slice was their lemon lime, because uh, like in a soda fountain for Coke, you have Coke, Sprite, Diet Coke, etc. Uh, for for Pepsi, they had to have the lemon lime, and there was no Sierra Mist, so they had Slice for a while, and then Slice had a Mandarin Orange. And there was various other flavors, but Doctor Slice was their their uh, um, Dr. Pepper, and if you look at the box, the 12 pack cans, uh, the tagline at the bottom was, It's the wild one. Oh, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> you get Dr. Slice, he's the wild one. Oh, I got a pal. Here's going to be your gimmick. We're going to call you Dr. Oh, Slice. Boy. Doesn't that seem a little bit like Dr. Pepper? No, pal, you're not Dr. Pepper. You're the wild one. Oh, you're so fucking wild. Ah, it's oh. beautiful. Oh, sorry. For a second, I almost thought Snagglepuss was in on a creative meeting for a gimmick. Heavens to Murgatroyd, are you sure we should be calling him Dr. Slice? It kind of sounds on the nose with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you all right now. In six months after the divorce of... Reptilian overlord Bill Gates and his wife Cuckold and Melinda Gates are is finalized. All the doctor sodas are going to be wiped out of existence by the evil baby killing, baby eating, humanity ruining, reptilian overlord, pedophilia, elitist, Washington, Bill Gates. Who invited Alex Jones to this meeting? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, an hour and 40 minutes in, and I, I <laughs> Alex didn't join the party. By the way, Squeezer, did you did, know you could get... Did you mean to go into Alex, or was that Vince, and he just kind of... You, you just... No, I meant, you to, went... I, I meant to go oh, into okay. Alex. 
By the way, Squeezer, that, that reminds me. I, I don't know if you're feeling uh, uh, nostalgic for old soda flavors and you want to remember about all the sodas you drank as a kid. You're going to want to get Alpha Brain 5 Beta version full of all the great nutrients your brain needs to taste that old soda flavor, including matted wolf hair, dry cement, and sawdust fresh from the cutting room floor. Go to Infowars.com. Enter the code name RAD for 25% off your order today. <laughs> Those are great ingredients. Let's that brain function. I hear you drinking. I mean, are, you, are you taking your alpha brain beta five right now? <laughs> do they all just have that little cross in the nutritional information right next to that sauce? Yes, that cross means the elitist and DC don't approve of our brain functioning cereal. I mean, uh, that medicine. <laughs> All right, Squeezer. Oh, we're on my next. No, we're talking to exercise. We're on Squeezer's next bit. Yeah. Level in Jolt is just under the level allowed by the Food and Drug Administration, but still only about a third of the caffeine found in coffee. The drink also has lots of cane sugar in it, 160 million pounds of it from right here in Louisiana. Dr. Lang says because the sugar passes over the teeth fairly quickly and doesn't stick, it shouldn't cause a major problem. Based on what I see now, uh, just the fact that it has double sugar and double caffeine, I don't think it's necessarily going to cause double the amount of cavities. However, Dr. Lang says if Jolt is abused and misused, it can cause problems, just like abusing other soft drinks can also contribute to cavities. That's the same clip I played. <laughs> I Was it? Yeah, when I talked about Jolt at my cousin's sleepovers. Yeah. Oh. Nice. It was, it's a great clip because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they you, clearly paid that guy off. Right. Uh, sugar passes through the teeth. It doesn't cling on to yeah, it. Yeah, it just passes over. I I gotta I gotta play that to my mom. I I want to I want her reaction to that. Uh, as a dental hygienist. As a dental hygienist. As a professional tooth cleaner. My dentist um, like like waterboards me asking if I had any sugary drinks. Like seriously. She's like, did you drink well, anything with sugar? And I'm like, no. And she's this tiny uh, Asian woman, and she's she maybe weighs like 105 pounds, but she scares the living shit out of me. <laughs> well, yeah, and my mom knew though, because she was, you know, she did all the shopping, so she knew we didn't have any sugary drinks in the house. We just had, you know, a bunch of juice and uh, Hawaiian punch, high C, Kool Aid, Ecto Cooler, you know, but no Sunny soda, D. no sugar in the house. Yeah, Sunny D. Sunny, no, we didn't. We never really did Sunny D. Oh, uh, we we had Sunny D like crazy. Oh, if anything, we would if like for some reason we saw it as a treat, we would get the Minute Maid in the frozen concentrate. Mm, not a... And I I would love that, even though it tasted awful. Um. Anyway, Jolt. Was there anything more like a, as a kid, as a, younger, like this was almost, like taboo. Yeah, it's like drugs. Yeah. Well, I told like, you the oh, story. You can't have this. So this goes into my the theme of my night. You know how I said anything new in the cooler, I'd buy and try it. Mm-hmm. So I was a generally quiet kid, especially when my mom wanted to go on drives ugh, to Philly to see the lights on Boathouse Row. <laughs> so one night, I get. Uh, believe me, though, we, we talked about this. I get it now. Right. So one night we're on a drive in my dad's Bronco and I'm in the middle seat and I'm and my mom's finally like, what the fuck? You never say a word. What is wrong with you? She's like, what did you buy at the Texaco? I was like, oh, this new drink, Jolt Cola. And they're like, I know. I just thought it was a new cola. I didn't know it was double caffeine, double sugar. And she's like, Jesus Christ, you're wired. The sugar obviously <laughs> does not give you the amp. Like, sugar doesn't make you have energy. Uh, it gives you, like, it's it, you're, it tricks your body into thinking it's winter and stores it as fat. But <laughs> it doesn't give you, like, instant energy. Caffeine, on the other hand, for a child especially, makes you race. And I had no yeah. idea. I was, like, fucking. So they're like, we never heard you say this many words ever. <laughs> Uh, I remember I would hit up the um, the mini mart next to Palace down there, in old Whitehall. That was my mm. that's where I would go and get my jolts. Cause you get out of there after school. Cause as a kid, like my mom would never let me get it. So when I was old enough to drive or go by myself, then yes, then I would get the jolts. By then, it was already 
it been around the block. Jolt came out in 1985. Uh, it's the brainchild of a, a CJ rap who he was in school and he noticed his friends were like in, in college because I guess they were cramming for exams. I don't comp- necessarily understand. I was just drinking and playing Mario. But uh, they would like make their own concoctions like coffee, energy drinks, soda, whatever you could, and, you know. Adderall ground up in it, whatever, uh, to study. So he's like, oh, there's a market for this. So he partnered with his dad, who owned a Canada Dry bottling plant. Um, so it's a real rags to riches story. Um, and they decided they were going to use as much caffeine as possible. So when they say at double the amount that's in Coke and Pepsi, the FDA actually put a limit on how much you're allowed six milligrams of caffeine per ounce of soft drink. So that's why they went with the 5.9 milligrams of caffeine. It's it's just under under the wire on that. Per and what? Then, yeah, what, what, the what's, sugar too. What's it? 5.9 milligrams per what? Per fluid ounce. So, and what's what's that equate to here? In a 12 ounce can, that was what? Uh, it's five, 12 times six is 60 times two, 72, 72 milligrams. There's 72 milligrams in a 12 ounce can. How much was, let's say, a 16 ounce can then? Oh, now you gotta make me a multiply by six, 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 36. So, so what's it? 96. 16 times 5.9, 94. I was close. So I have a 16 yeah. ounce can of Rockstar Pure Zero, and it has 240 milligrams of caffeine in it. Wow! They just stopped caring after a while. This was, I mean, this was 1985. Yeah. Um, I mean, still a cup of coffee. Your your average coffee is still 31 milligrams per ounce. Right. So an eight ounce coffee is eight t- whatever I don't know what eight times three is, but it's a lot. Um, so yeah, it's probably like 240, 250. Two, why, so why yeah, do they, it's why like do the equivalent a, of that. Now, I also drink like... What? They say a regular cup of coffee. Caffeine in a cup of coffee. It's way lower than that. 95 milligrams. Bitches. You're drinking weak coffee then. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, but it's also like their idea of a cup of coffee is not my cup of coffee it's eight ounces you're drinking uh, i think they're i think they actually go with six this is eight here so it's coffee oh, okay. eight yeah. ounces 95 well it, it i mean but everything's different you know every every bean is going to be a little different it's not all the same but yeah yeah i'm drinking if i drink anywhere from six to ten of those 16 ounce monstrosities every day uh Yes, Squeezer, do you have uh, malodextrin, uh, glucuronolatone? I might, because I know our coffee maker uses city water. And I don't know what's in that water. Inositol? Oh, yeah. I actually actually take an inositol uh, tablet with dinner every day. Uh, nasianimide, nis- decalcium, panth- panthothinate, milk thistle extracts, panax ginseng Panthro- root, pyridoxine. Wait, wait, they, they, they throw all that shit in there and they go, oh, here's some milk thistle. Yeah. Pyridoxine hydrochloride, guaranaseed extractive, yellow five, blue one. Huh. Sinocolobimin, and people are like, I'm not taking the vaccine because I don't know what's in it. <laughs> As they crack a monster. There's a rock star squeezer. Sorry. Yeah. Rock star energy. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, like the, it was the most taboo thing in the world. But it, it Jolt started it. It was the, the grandfather, the godfather, the beginning of the energy drinks. A few years later, uh, 
Red Bull would come out. No one really knew what the hell Red Bull was until like in the nineties. And even then, like I remember I got Wipeout XL and Red Bull was like the sponsor in game and I had no idea what the hell Red Bull was. Red Bull wasn't in America until like the two thousands. It yeah. was in Europe, Squeezer, so you don't know? Yeah. Yeah. That's Red Bull gives you things. Like... Europe doesn't count. It's over there. They can't hear this. There's an ocean in between us. Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull was created in Austria in 1987, so it probably de- debuted before the George Cola. Yeah. Uh, Joel came out in 85. Yes, but 87 in Europe is before 85 in America. <laughs> oh, there's a- That's right. I forgot. Hong Kong's six hours away from here. Yeah, you don't understand the time transfer. <laughs> I don't know why it, it kind of disturbs me every time you're like that. I, I just see you in black latex. But the Austrian company that I come from created Red Bull in 1987. Get to the chopper. Is that how they got it here? They flew each one over. We flew the choppers. <laughs> yeah, I have a Red Bull before I did. Uh, 87, so... Uh, before I did Twins with Danny DeVito. <laughs> Red Bull was, like, super popular. And then... It, uh, like, America's like, we have all these weird flavors, so now they have to, like, make all these weird flavors just to keep up. It's weird. I, out of all of them, I'll still just drink a regular old Red Bull. I don't mind it. Reminds me of college. Yeah, but and then I get like a vodka aftertaste, even if it's not mixed. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, my last pick. Not If you're not from this area, you might not have ever heard of this. So what will it be today, Bob? Coffee? Pepsi? Surprise me. It's not a use you want to be loved by anyone. This is a surprise. Introducing Coffee Cola. It's Pepsi. It's coffee. It's new Pepsi Kona. Anything else? Did you do something with your hair? New Pepsi Kona. Surprise. (sighs) So, I don't like Coffee Squeezer, but I was obsessed with Pepsi Kona. Uh, Now, 1996, I was... 14 and I was still going back to the Texaco gas station squeezer and I would start mm-hmm. working there soon. Um, that summer actually. Uh, and I, I, when I saw something new, I'd buy it and I saw Pepsi Kona coffee cola and I bought it. And my mom was like, what the hell is that? That's, that can't be good for you. You can't be drinking coffee. I don't know if it had any more cap. I mean, I have a can downstairs, but I don't think they put like how much caffeine was in the can back then. Now, I saw the com- this commercial aired a lot in our area, too, because we're in the greater Philadelphia area. But Pepsi Kona was a flavor of Pepsi that was test marketed in May 1996 until 1997 only in the city of Philadelphia. This soft drink did not go anywhere else. Wait, it was never released nationally. It was never released nationally. Seriously. Because I... Wow. No shit. We're considered Philadelphia, though, Squeezer. Well, yeah, but, like, I, I didn't... I always thought that uh, that was a that was just a flavor of Pepsi that they released for a time. Right. No, nope, it was only here. Wow. That's why people don't know. I just this. learned something on the Rogers podcast. Right. Um. So, Pepsi had some other, like, Morning Dead Pepsi AM... Which was um, regular Pepsi, but with 28% more caffeine. Now, like, Pepsi fucking Max, or whatever the fuck it's called now, Pepsi Zero Sugar, has, like, shitloads of caffeine. It has more caffeine. Pepsi Max has more caffeine in it than Joel Cola. In a 20-ounce bottle, there's 115 milligrams of caffeine. Damn. Yeah. I can't wait to tell Mrs. Squeezer this because when I was going over uh, what show we were doing, asking for any thoughts, she goes, oh, what about Pepsi Kona? 
I'm like, ah, oh, Ryan's already got it. And she is a Philly girl. Yeah. Well, it was so, it was here too. It was here. It was all over here. No, no, I I know, but it, regionally, like it, it. So they had to sell I, it I here. Doubt she is because he thought that <laughs> because think of television markets at the time. It's it Philadelphia. They ha- anywhere that that they run commercials, they wanted to sell it. Yeah. So um and and also the idea behind it was, uh, uh they, they they wanted to sell Pepsi in the morning. Yes. Drink a Pepsi with your breakfast. And, and, like and there s- is no city in the world other than Philadelphia that you will get someone drinking a soda with your breakfast. So this is from the Philadelphia Inquirer in May 1996. Uh, Marilyn uh, Martyr wrote this. Regions cola drinkers try out a different taste. Combine two of the world's most popular beverages, coffee and coli- cola, and what do you get? Pepsi Kona, the new coffee flavored cola being test marketed in the Philadelphia area. It was introduced into supermarkets last week and should be available virtually anywhere Pepsi Cola is sold. Pepsi Cola Co. is interested in learning several things. Are coffee and cola as compatible as cherry and cola and as chocolate and milk? Is this a marriage made in marketing heaven or could it be a misguided as a move as reformulating Coke? From Pepsi's perspective, the initial response to coffee cola has been very positive. I even drank it. I loved it. I don't even like co- <laughs> coffee. The st- I've only, I always, I don't know. I'm still, I, I always, I'll drink Coke. I don't mind it. I like Coke. I like Coke Zero. But I've always been, a, I have a Pepsi collection. I've always had a soft spot for Pepsi in my heart. Um, I have a weird Pepsi collection, which I will show off to you all one day. <laughs> The staple Pepsi Cola already has a strong consumer base among teens. A new flavor expected to appeal to older customers with more mature tastes. Pepsi Kona could be the drink choice of a maturing, maturing Pepsi consumer ease into adulthood. We think the product will have the best response in the 18 to 39 age group, said Lori Tauber Marcus, senior marketing manager for Pepsi Kona. Our early testing showed that consumers who like both coffee and cola love this. Oh, I'm re- I'm reading the comments section on a uh, on this, and people are getting mad, saying that no, you're lying. It's not. It wasn't only in Philly. I worked in Trenton, or I. Right? Could you watch I, I worked... Fox Twenty Nine or NBC Ten? Then you, if that's fucking Philadelphia, they didn't give a I shit know. about the city no. proper. It was the market. Yes. Where you could see the damn commercial. So when it says test marketed, that means the market. So we are the greater Philadelphia market. So wherever that is, is where they sold it. Where are you seeing this? Uh, uh, soda fandom, the soda, the dash soda dot fandom. And they have a, the comment section and people are saying, no, it's not true. I, I worked, I was in Wildwood, New Jersey and I had it there. Oh, here's or, a comment. I got it in Allentown. I I'm a yeah, yeah I was in Allentown when I was in college I traveled to a theater festival in Allentown PA in late January 1996 and found Pepsi Cola in a store ooh. there. Let me think about the theater festival in January. So it was either Civic Theater, it had to be Civic Theater. Yeah. When I went back to the dorms after the festival, I brought one can with me to share with my buddies who instantly loved it, but it never made it. Yeah, because all the other ones I know were uh, during the summer. Wildwood, New Jersey. I live in PA, but not Philly, and we had it at my tech school. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the market. If you can see the commercials, that's... Uh, test market in Philadelphia was absolutely untrue. It was available, I know, personally in New Jersey, Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> but they say NC in Virginia, but I doubt it. Your article conflicts. Wow. It states it was only available in Philadelphia, but previous states it was on sale virtually everywhere. Additionally, I can personally verify it was available in Wildwood, New Jersey. I worked at a Seven <laughs> Eleven in Trent. Yeah, they're all in the Philadelphia fucking market. I don't know if you lived somewhere that wasn't fucking fi- the Philadelphia market and had this. Let us know. Alert us to it. I definitely had it. Um, wow, I I don't know why I thought this was a, a bigger thing. Like I knew it, it bombed and it went away, but 
It shouldn't have bombed. I liked it. I might. I, I didn't know that. I I was. I didn't. I was a rat in a cage. Um, my little wheel. Despite all your age, I have yeah. a can of this that I can photograph for you people, for you fans out there, to see how glorious the can was. It's beautiful. We can. should look up how much how much a, a space in the White Hall Mall costs for my collection. Your your whole your Pepsi museum. My whole Pepsi yeah. museum. <laughs> Yeah, right across from Comic Masters. <laughs> I think there's a, a, a bodega selling uh, bridal Perfect. gowns and cigars. Yeah, so people go in there trying to buy a pep, thinking you're a bodega trying to buy your Pepsi. Or yeah, or a bridal gown. <laughs> or a bridal gown. Little and number. right ac- right across from the the pet store, and everything smells like animal piss. Or, or try to race their RC car. Yeah, or or the guy laying in the. Uh, massage chair with a blanket over his lap staring at my children while we carry them away <laughs> oh that's fun well, that's oh it. yeah that was a joy that's this is uh this is the show this is retro soda squeezer yeah it was fun it was a fun adventure are you gonna let me have my last pick oh wait you didn't do your last pick no Oh man, it feels like we're. We I knew what you were doing, and I was just gonna let you play the music. I, I, I said it. I, I feel like we've done a whole show. <laughs> we've we've done a whole show. It's almost Saturday. All right. All, All right. right, Squeezer. What's your last pick? I definitely I don't won't even cut like this. this I don't out. even like this soda. So, <laughs> fuck it. There we go. Cooler than a shag haircut. Easier to wear than poultry. More comfortable than a kick in the head. They're Bark 2s from Bark's Root Beer. Cool, removable body art in 36 different designs. Free! Inside specially marked 12 packs of great tasting Bark's Root Beer. The one with bite. So leave your later hose at home and make a fashion statement on your arm, on your leg, or on your head. With Bark 2s from Bark's Root Beer. The one with Bark 2s. You don't like barks? <clears throat> I do not like barks, no. Oh. So there's two kinds there's two kinds of root beer out there. There is your sharp sarsaparilla kind of root beer and your creamy delicious root beer. And I am in the creamy delicious camp. I oh. like my uh, the so, van- I like my uh, vanilla root beer. I like mine tasting like wintergreen then cuz I love barks. Oh, so you're a barks guy. No, I me personally I I like it's almost like, oh no, you gotta like something in the glass, but no, I think A and W is like the best out there. A and W is good; it's creamy and vanilla. But I like Barks. Yeah. I, I like that. I like sarsaparilla. I, I get that, and I actually like sarsaparilla. But it, uh, if as that's a mod fun sarsaparilla, sarsaparilla. But as a root beer goes, I prefer A and W. And a and W is also the greatest restaurant in the world because <laughs> it's fits combined with Kentucky Fried Chicken. I can get my fried chicken and then get root beer on the tap, and it doesn't even have to and be a side A&W, of corn though. dog nuggets. Well, and a side of corn dog nuggets. Anytime you can just get straight up root beer or white birch beer, preferably on tap. They used to have it at our our church festival. In a in a blue barrel full of ice. No, ice. no, it was part of the beer truck. Oh, in the beer truck, that's good too. Yeah. Um, but and it you quickly, always you always went with your dad, and he'd get you the the birch beer to have with yep. him while he got his beer. Walking around feeling like a grown up, yep. Because mm-hmm. all grown ups just the whole point of it is just getting a buzz on, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, in the Catholic Church, uh, we're not just known for our pedophilia; <laughs> we're known for our summer festivals where we have gambling and alcohol. <laughs> yes, and various and various uh. Tents of fried food. Various tents of fried food and pierogies and a flea market in the church basement that is also our lunch uh, cafeteria, auditorium, and gym. My family would always run the waffles and ice cream uh, stand. Ah, uh, what at the... Uh, literally like Saint-Ese? two Belgian waffles and a like a quart of ice cream. Well, no, we uh, with the way they did it, at our church was they had the waffle, two waffle, Belgian waffle. And they just unwrapped a Neapolitan like slab of ice cream yeah. and put it in between. Yep. Yeah. Oh god, it was so good. Oh, like Jimmy Sir yeah, played I... on the stage. <laughs> or walk. I, I remember going to the one up the street from us too, and like, I would get these. Um, like I was like ten, and I would go up to the one ten, and like you wouldn't, they wouldn't let you like play the wheel or anything, like any of the gambling games. 
Mm-hmm. But there was another one where I could buy these little cards, and if I pull up, peel up the five tabs, and if I get so many to the match, I win, and I could win money. Oh, they let you buy those? Yeah. I don't, or someone dropped the ball, but I spent every dime I had, and I was just basically playing lottery tickets at 10. Yeah, that's what uh, they play at, like, the fucking fire clubs, social clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so in 1993, <clears throat> the cool thing that uh, – all right, so Barks' advertising campaign, very 90s. I, I'd say they take they took the Sega approach to their marketing. Yeah, they had Nick Swartz that, and Barks has yeah. bite. And, like, even though there's, like, 10 milligrams of caffeine, they show people drinking it and, like, losing their shit. Yeah. No, no, you, you didn't. It was it, – but it felt like it would, you would. Like, the flavor – that flavor, compared to any other soda, you would think, oh, wow, this is strong, you know? Uh, but anyway, in 93, if you got a specially marked 12-pack, you could get a pack of uh, temporary tattoos. And they had 36 designs, and they, they, they ran the gamut from your traditional uh, mom with the heart. You had scorpions, panthers. That was like sailor they tattoos. Were all yeah, they were all – it was just a bunch of sailor tattoos. And it, it was, like, basically, like, a parody of tattoos. And yeah. it, it was – they were fantastic. It was great. It was really cool. And I would beg mom to go and, like, please, just can we get this? And she's like, I'll just get you temporary tattoos. They're cheaper. You know, like, like we're, at, we're at the grocery store, and for, like, 50 cents and an egg machine, I can get a temporary tattoo, or she can go and get a uh, – a dozen cans of barks that she wouldn't want me to drink anyway. We got them occasionally. It was fun. And then the next year, uh, they uh, released a Barks 2s. Uh, and it was <clears throat> this year, this time. Oh, wow. Perfect time to lose my voice. Because uh, they did so well. Because they had a 36% market increase in 1993 from this temporary what they assume was from the temporary tattoo campaign that they then signed a licensing deal and there were some Harley Davidson tattoos uh the next time around mm. but yeah Barks root beer now I your favorite not mine I'm an A&W guy but at the same time A&W doesn't give me temporary tattoos that is true all right um I guess I think we could close the show out now. Could I play the closing music and not be humiliated? Now you may. Because I'm, I'm about to lose my voice from the Alex Jones impression. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. That's the show, guys. We've talked everything we could say. We've talked every. We said everything we could say <laughs> about <laughs> retro soda. Do we have a, an inkling of what we're doing next week, Squeezer? Uh, are are we going back now? Because I know we you skipped over. Is it is it uh, record store week yet? No, it's last day of school memories. Oh, what about blockbuster flops? Oh yeah, well, I'm sorry. Would be blockbuster flops. Would be blockbuster flops. Then last Wait, what day. Is, what, what does that mean? So like it was meant to be a blockbuster. Oh. But, but it was a flop. Oh. Oh, would be blockbuster flops. Yes. Like, okay. not would be blockbuster flops where it should have been a flop, but it wasn't. No, 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 no. This is like movies right, that so were. Godzilla. Yes. Godzilla's a great okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Then, Last Day of School Memories, Disney shit. Then, Record Store, me- Record Store Memories for Record Store Day. Then retro video game music, theme park memories, water episode two, and we're into the summer with a whole bunch of fun summer episodes. It's going to be a fun summer on the Rad Years podcast. Right, Squeeze? Yes. Sit inside and listen to us. Sit inside. Keep cool. Drink that Barks root beer. And we'll be back next week. Or A&W. Talking shitty movies. I'm RK. I'm Squeezer. See you guys. Hi, Schmuffin. Hi, Schmuffin. Oh, hi, Schmuffin. Squeezer says hi. Say hi, Schmuffin. That was a very weak. Very weak. That's how you go out. She's like, the show's over. I need to say hi to everybody. All right, bye, everybody. <laughs>